Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to be installing this bad boy, the Gigabyte Titan Ridge 2.0 Thunderbolt 3 card. How many upgrades can we do to a Mac Pro 5 one? You know, it just keeps going. Now, other people have done this already, and this card was given to me, and it came pre-flashed. If you buy this on New Egg or something, you're going to have to flash it yourself, but these guys have a store on eBay. They sell deleted CPUs for the Mac Pro. They sell this card pre-flashed for the Mac Pro. And they also sell uh, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth 4.2 card that I recently did a video on and installed into my Mac Pro, which has been working great ever since. You also have to have OpenCore installed. I recently just updated to Martin Lowe's OpenCore package 0.7.6 just this morning. And as you can see behind me, it's working great. I got Pro Tools running. You know, unfortunately, I don't have a Thunderbolt interface to try out with this, and I don't have a Thunderbolt monitor. The Titan Ridge comes with two mini DisplayPort inputs, and you have to connect your GPU to the Titan Ridge using the included mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort cables. And then you can connect up to a 5K Thunderbolt monitor. I think it only works with certain monitors and not others, but I'm not sure about that. The main thing is I'm going to see if I get speed improvements connecting my SanDisk Extreme Pro directly to the card. Right now I have a SANA USB 3.1 card installed. I'm going to have to remove that. I've only got two spare slots in my Mac Pro aside from my graphics card because my RX 5700 XT eats into the second slot. So I've got my USB 3.0 card, and I got my NVMe boot drive. This has to be in slot four. You also have to connect a little jumper cable. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but it's a very simple install. Connect the jumper, put it in slot four, and boot up. And then the one last thing you have to do is edit the OpenCore config plist and uh, set one of the things for Thunderbolt to true so you can hot swap peripherals like hard drives. So that's it. Let's get to the install. Okay, so the video got a little longer than I was expecting. So I have broken it up into these chapters. And if you want to skip to the next chapter, you can do so. Because, you know, most people have installed PCIe cards before they know how to do that. If you want to just skip to the speed test, you can skip to chapter five or chapter six. So step one, just unplug the Mac Pro from the power and then lay the Mac Pro on its back and discharge any static electricity that you might have lingering on your body and remove the side door. Okay, so I set my Mac Pro down on its side. As you can see, I have my RX 5700 XT graphics card, which eats into slot number two. So all I can fit in there is that little antenna extension for my Bluetooth card. And then I have my NVMe card. And then finally, my USB 3.1 card, which I will be removing to put in the Titan Ridge. Okay, so here's the card with a little tag on it saying this card is not guaranteed to work for all devices. If it doesn't work for you, please contact us for help or return with reason of doesn't fit. Thanks for your purchase from DQ upgrade. So for me, all I need out of the box here is the little jumper cable. But if you have Thunderbolt displays, you're going to need these mini display port to display port cables that come in the box. Okay, so we're going to connect the jumper cable to pin five and then loop it over and connect it to pin three. You want to be in that second bay there. And the reason I believe we have to do this is because with the jumper in place, it allows the Titan Ridge to get power from the Mac Pro's PCIe slot as opposed to having to use external power connectors to the card. So now that we've got the jumper going from pin 5 to pin 3, we can now install the card. But before we install it, there's one more mod you can do if you got the balls. And right now I don't have the balls. I'm not going to do it, but I am maybe going to have my friend do it down the road. And I'm going to call it the sleep mod. And I found this on Mac Rumors. Somebody came up with this. I'm guessing it works because a couple other people seem to try it and it seems to be working for them. The issue is if you want to be able to sleep your Mac Pro with this card in it, you're not going to be able to. It's going to go to sleep and then it'll wake right back up. 
and all your hard drives or connected peripherals will be ejected, which you don't want. So this little mod, by removing this one little jumper, will allow your Mac Pro to go to sleep and your hard drives will stay connected. So I flipped the card over and I removed the four screws that hold on the face plate and I removed the face plate. And judging by looking at the original picture, I thought there was gonna be a little jumper I could just pull off of there, but no, you have to remove a soldered jumper and it's so tiny. I don't dare do it myself because it's just so freaking small. But that supposedly goes to pin number 11 on the PCIe card, which controls sleep. So you can do this at your own risk. You know, I never put my computer to sleep before, so I don't know if I'm gonna bother, but I might. So I'm sure you've all done this stuff before, but anyway, I'm just gonna show it in the video. Uh, we gotta remove this little bar that holds down all the PCIe cards. It's always been difficult. Not so much taking it out, but when you go to put it back in, if you don't have all your cards lined up perfectly, it's a real pain in the butt to get it back in. So whenever I pull that thing out of there, I always set it down on the table the way it came out. If you have it flipped around and you go to put it back in, you're gonna be spending a long time trying to screw it in and it never will get screwed in. So there's my USB 3.1 card, which was 10 gigabits per second. Now we're gonna be putting in the Thunderbolt 3 card, which is 40 gigabits per second. So we're putting the Titan Ridge into a PCIe 2.0 slot and it's a four time slot. And from what I understand, the maximum speed you're gonna get with any hard drive possible with the PCIe 2.0 four time slot is 1500 megabytes per second. So you just wanna take your time, make sure you've got the pins lined up properly to the slot and ease her in. I use my hand on the outside of the Mac to help out. So now we gotta put in the godforsaken bracket that holds the PCIe cards down. Um, I kinda bring it towards me and then I bring it up towards the hard drive bay. There's a little lip there, uh, which you wanna go under that lip. Um, if you have it too far forward towards you, it's not gonna screw in. You wanna have it backed into that lip all the way. I'm sure most of you have all done this already but you know it is a pain. Um, and then I have to push my graphics card forward and sort of inward to be able to get it to screw in. But I got that one in, now I'm going in for the second screw. And uh, I had to fidget around with my NVMe card here and finally I found that little spot you need to find to get it to screw in. So I'm just doing the final turns on that. Okay, so we put the lid back on, we plugged it in, we booted it up, and now we are going to edit the config plist in OpenCore so that we have hot swappability with the Thunderbolt ports on this card. This is something that is normally turned off in Martin Lowe's package because a lot of people don't have Thunderbolt. So we now have to go mount our EFI and make the little change to the config plist or config program list. I used to call it the playlist. That was incorrect. I have since been corrected. So I'm opening the config plist. You can use any text editor to edit these things. I have BB edit, which is nice because it gives me those number lines on the left. So as you can see at line 11, it says Thunderbolt and line 13 under enabled it says false. I want to set that to true. And then you want to hit save. It's always a good idea to reopen the config plist after you've done an edit to it to make sure you typed it in properly and that it did get saved because any typos could lead to big problems with OpenCore. So with Blackmagic speed test, and this is when I still had the older USB 3.1 card installed, I connected the SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is rated at 1000 megabytes per second, direct to the card, and I only got 649 megabytes per second write and 678 read. So now let's see how the Titan Ridge stands up with the SanDisk Extreme Pro connected directly to it. And we have a nice bump 
Our read speed is 905 megabytes per second and our write is 837. And uh, I had it run this several times and I was getting very consistent results. So that's pretty good. We're getting about a 200 megabyte per second bump. So I couldn't help myself. I really need to know how fast the Titan Ridge can go. And I'm sure anyone else considering buying this for their Mac Pro 5.1 would like to know that info as well. So I decided to buy one of these Phantom Drives. It's a Thunderbolt 3 drive rated up to 2,800 megabytes per second. And here is the miracle, folks. And I know people already have this going on with this card, but the Mac Pro 2009, 2010, 2012 were never supposed to work with Thunderbolt. Yet here we are in the year 2021, and there it is. This is the first time I've ever connected a Thunderbolt drive to my Mac Pro and it comes up under port one, or rather it says receptacle one, and then down below you can see Phantom Drive Extreme Thunderbolt 3 NVMe. And we are looking at the Thunderbolt bus, not USB. That's very important, but it's not all fairy tales and unicorns. We now have to do a speed test and see how the drive fares in a PCIe 2.0 four times slot. Okay, so we're getting 1400 megabytes per second read and write. Those are the exact same speeds I get with my internal NVMe. I also cloned my system onto the Phantom Drive, the Thunderbolt Drive, and I'm able to boot up off the external drive. Now, after saying that and thinking I had booted up off the external drive, I have since returned this drive uh, I am told that that is virtually impossible. It can't be done. I would swear that I did it. I showed you the picture where it does show up as a boot choice, but maybe it reverted and booted off my other system because it was just a clone. I don't know. I remember grabbing it in the open core boot picker and hitting boot. So I would swear that it did boot into the external Thunderbolt drive, but I am told it's virtually impossible to do that with a Mac Pro 5.1. Okay, so while these speeds are pretty sweet, the reality is, is you can put in an internal card into your Mac Pro and get much faster speeds. If you RAID 0 four NVMEs together on a card like this OWC card, you can then get almost up to like 5,500 megabytes per second read and write speed, but it has to be in that 16 times slot, which is the second slot next to your GPU. If you're really in need for speed, that is the way to go. There is a major quirk using this card and Thunderbolt. Now, if you want to use this card just for a USB-C device, that's fine and dandy, and you will get 900 megabytes per second speed. But if you want to use it for Thunderbolt, there's a major issue that goes on with this card. Uh, when you first boot up your Mac from it not being on at all, it's called a cold boot. You do the cold boot and your drive will mount, but it's mounting under USB-C. It is not mounting under Thunderbolt and it will only get 900 megabytes per second speed. It will not get the Thunderbolt 1400 megabytes per second. You have to wake up the Thunderbolt port. And what I find I have to do is to unplug the drive, plug the drive back in. So first I eject it, then I unplug it, I plug it back in and I do a restart. And then voila, now the drive is showing up under Thunderbolt and I can then add my USB 3.1 hub to the other port and they work together. I still got Thunderbolt speeds on the Thunderbolt drive and I got the USB 3 also working. If you then go reboot your computer again, the Thunderbolt reverts back to USB-C, back to 900 megabytes per second, back to not showing up as a device under Thunderbolt. And the only way to get it back is to do that whole dance again. First, you get rid of the USB hub. That's gotta be out of the picture. You gotta unplug the Thunderbolt drive, plug it back in and reboot. And hopefully 
it will then show up as the Thunderbolt drive. If not, you gotta shut down all the way, do the cold start, then do the unplug and plug, then reboot, and voila, Thunderbolt is there. Now for me, that's a deal breaker. I can't be bothered with that. Uh, you know, my audio interface is USB 2. It is not a Thunderbolt interface. Um, and some devices might act differently than this one hard drive I'm using. But I've read on the chats that people do this restart thing a lot to get their Thunderbolt devices working. Um, you know, once it is working, you don't have to shut down your computer. You can just leave it on, but you can't sleep it because the computer is going to wake right back up unless you do the sleep mod that I showed you earlier. So long, long story short, you know, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video because I know I didn't making it. It was really time consuming and there's just unfortunate quirks with this card. I'm going to return the Phantom Drive, even though it's a nice drive and it works well and I get good speeds with it. I just can't, you know, $300, no. I'm going to spend less than that money and put a new NVMe and PCIe card into my Mac Pro. And I will use the Titan Ridge as a USB 3.1 card. And I'm actually getting better speeds with it than I did with my Sonnet. 3.1 cards. So I'm getting about 200 megabytes more per second. I got the card for free. Thank you. DQ upgrades on eBay. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And we'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.